Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video episode on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, and as always, we have a really cool gun for you today. Specifically, we're looking at an Obregon. This is, looks very much like a 1911. We have it set here next to an Argentine 1911 copy, so that you can see the very obvious similarities. However, among a couple, there, are, there are a couple minor differences with the Obregon, and there's one very significant difference. That is, if you notice, the barrel doesn't drop it rotates. There are a number of other pistols in history uh, that have used rotating barrels. It's not a very common system, but it is out there. So the history of the Obregon is a little cloudy. Um, we don't know a whole lot about them. About 800 were made, um, and we believe they were made in the mid-1930s. Uh, there was a Mexican patent that was applied for and granted in 1934, and an American patent in 1938. And the best we can tell, these, the 800 or so pistols that were actually made were made between those two years. Uh, they were intended for a Mexican army contract, which ended up falling through. Um, the Mexicans simply continued to use the standard 1911 instead. These use 1911 magazines. They use the standard 45 automatic uh, cartridges. And in fact, the whole lower frame of the gun is very similar to a stock 1911. But let's take it apart and uh, see how it's different inside. It disassembles just like a, a regular 1911. We're going to depress the spring bushing. Here's one interesting facet to the Obergon. It has a captive recoil spring, which is a nice improvement. It has a slightly different barrel bushing. Here, we have the major difference. We have this cam block and an angled groove on the barrel that causes it to rotate when the slide goes forward and backward. And that's what locks the gun. Okay. Mm -hmm. So on a standard 1911 barrel like this one, you can see we have locking lugs cut in the very top of the barrel, and those lock into matching recesses in the slide. On the Obregon, instead, we have a series of four locking lugs that are cut around the circumference of the barrel, and the slide is wider to accept them and has grooves around the circumference of the slide. The locking piece sits on this pin that's machined into the frame of the gun. So it sits right like that. And the barrel, this cammed groove, sets in just like this. So as the barrel goes forward and backward, it rotates to engage and disengage the locking lugs. Now, the Obergon um, includes a number of simplifications and improvements to the general 1911 design, most of which are pretty clever. Um, the barrel bushing, since the, the barrel no longer tilts up and down, the barrel bushing is simpler to manufacture. It can be perfectly circular, and it doesn't have to allow for the barrel to, uh, to be tilting down, so it doesn't need to be slightly ovaled out. The safety and the uh, magazine hold open on the Obergon are combined into a single piece. It's a lot easier to manufacture. It gets rid of the little spring tube on the side of the frame. Um, it really has no downsides that we can see. It does have a magazine safety. If you take a look, again we'll compare a standard 1911 frame here. You can see the back side of the, the magazine release. On the Obergon, there's a little dog leg that comes up vertically from the magazine release. That uh, piece of the mag release actually physically blocks the trigger from moving and acts as a magazine safety. So for what it's worth, you can override it by pressing slightly in on the magazine catch to bring it out of the way. In addition, of course, where the standard 1911 has uh, these three loose 
recoil spring components. The Obregon has a single captive piece. Uh, this is a, a big improvement, we think. And uh, ultimately, it was a clever adaptation of the 1911 design. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't accepted by the Mexican Army, so very few of these exist. We're really lucky to be able to take a look at this one, especially in as nice a condition it is. And, even more so, we're lucky to uh, be able to take it out to the range and shoot it. So, let's head over to uh, the firing line and see what it's like to actually run some ammunition through. Alright, so we're out at the range now with the Obregon here. We're all loaded up and ready to do some shooting. One thing I want to point out, one of the differences with the Obregon is that it has this single piece safety and slide stop. So right now I have the safety engaged and that's disengaged. This is a significant simplification on the standard 1911 design. It gets rid of the, the, uh, the pin tube on the side of the frame and obviously one part is easier to make than several. So let's do some shooting and see how it goes. So a couple things we've noticed about the Obregon shooting it. First of all, it's a bit sensitive to different types of ammo. We had uh, one particular brand that must have slightly hard primers. It was denting the primers, but not firing. Uh, the other thing we've noticed is it, it is a little bit finicky with magazines. Some magazines will successfully lock open and others won't. And lastly, I'm typically left-handed and I have a hard time shooting this because I tend to bump the safety just slightly up and cause the gun to malfunction. So if you're right-handed, not a problem. If you're left-handed, this is something that you need to be careful with. Uh, obviously, these never went into real serious mass production. Uh, if they had, and if they had any interest in people being able to shoot them left-handed, they would have needed to have a little more um, uh, positive stop on the safety to keep it locked down, even when there's a little bit of pressure on it. So, Thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed this, and uh, tune back into ForgottenWeapons.com for more interesting Mexican pistols.